Hi guys and welcome back to my channel um, and I'm Sam by the way from the Unity of Life. So we have recently been doing quite a bit of videos on animals and I kind of lost track a little bit but um, if you remember at the very beginning of these videos uh, when this little journey all began I mentioned that we would be looking at F1 and we were looking at the brief history of F1 and then we we're going to go on um, and talk a little bit more about the sport as it is today. And then we're going to move on and talk about inspirational women that may not necessarily have anything to do with F1 but are in motorsports. Now, this isn't, I'm not going to go through every single woman, I've just picked out a few key women. Um, however, um, there's always room to do more people and um, more of these fantastic women um, videos on them. So if there is anybody in particular that you're thinking about and uh, that you want me to do a video on, um, then drop her name in the comments and I'll do my best to see um, what I can find out about them and learn something new. Um, because that's, that's all we want to do at the end of the day. We want to learn something new. We want to try and get more women into um, motorsport and see them. Especially stuff in like F1. So the first person we are going to talk about does have connections to um, Formula 1. She was in Formula 3. Um, she's done some test driving for Formula 1 as well. Um, and this is... <laughs> okay, so if you're a fan of Mercedes, you're going to know who this woman is um, straight away. And this is Susie Wolf that we're going to be doing, um, diving into and just talking a little bit about because I think she's um, she's like a really fantastic woman and she's very inspirational um, to a lot of women around the world as well. So we're going to um, get into why that is um, and obviously like I said this is the beginning of us talking about different women. Um, I think I might have five potentially five or six different um, topics to be uh, different women to talk about I'm, I can't remember off the top of my head um, but that's only for starters um, you know we can we can do this after every um, time we talk about Formula 1 and the, the, the Drive to Survive series because like I said season 4 isn't out yet but it is obviously the, the rumour that there is going to be a season 4 um, so if that does come out, we'll obviously we'll, we'll explore every single episode and that, and then after that we can look at some more fantastic, um, inspirational women if you would like. So Susie was born on the sixth of December in 1982 in um, Scotland, which um, is just at the, is definitely right at the top of England. In case people aren't aware of where Scotland is, um, it's. N so I don't live that far from the border um, of England and Scotland, so that's kind of um, why I think a lot of people uh, mistake with being Scottish some of the time, which isn't the case. Um, another, like I personally don't see how I sound Scottish, and I know if anybody is Scottish and they're watching this, they're going to be like, you don't sound Scottish, which I know I don't, but people down south do sometimes think I am. Don't know why, but there you go. So anyway, so Susie, she, like most of the guys that we've talked about in the Drive to Survive series, she started off by karting. And she actually ended up driving for Reynolds. Um, well, she actually went to Formula Reynolds. I'm not quite sure what that is. And she was also in Formula 3. So, you know, that that that's fantastic but you know so if women are getting into like the lower divisions of formula one and things that you need to get into formula one it begs the question to say why we haven't actually seen um any females compete in formula one against any of the guys that'd be very interesting to see um i think it'll definitely make the sport much more um entertaining to watch not that it isn't already entertaining um but yeah i, I think it would be quite interesting to see that so Susie then competed for Mercedes um, something to do with a DTM I'm not th I, I have got the thing here like what it says it's some sort of masters um, apparently uh, but it's in German and my German's not great <laughs> I don't really know any German so I'm not even going to try and butcher these names I think you've um, had enough of me doing that 
But anyway, so she she then decided she was going to join Williams uh, ahead of 2012's Formula One season as a development driver. So you know, again, it begs the difference. We're letting women become de these development drivers and the, the testing the cars, which are the Formula One cars, but yet we're still not actually seeing them on the tracks and racing against the men. And this is now. Um, 2021 or 2022 depending on when it is you were watching this video so she actually Susie actually made history at the 2014 British Grand Prix by becoming the first woman to feature in an F1 race weekend for 22 years but I don't think she actually competed as such though um, but yeah she was involved and it was the first time a woman had been involved for 22 years which is a bit shocking isn't it really that there's this like 22 year gap um and then she decided that she would retire in november of 2015 after competing in the race of champions it's just anybody knows anything about that great because i don't so maybe you can educate me on that so she she's done quite a lot after retirement okay she didn't just like retire and disappear off the face of the planet so after she's retired she worked um for channel four and she was doing the coverage for f1 um so you know she was she was um you know like the people that go around asking questions and to, and they interview sort of the drivers that's sort of what she was doing and then Susie has also been the team principal of Formula E. Um, again, I think it's called v Venture Racing since 2018. If I'm not pronouncing that correctly, I do apologise. Anyway, f um, and she's the first and only female team principal in Formula E. So Formula E is uh, pretty much like Formula One, um, but it's electric cars. Um, so they have so each driver actually has two cars because of the battery. Um, so they have to like changed the um car over i did watch um a few races when it first came in and there was some female drivers in there uh however the later we got into the season these i think there's only like two female drivers at this point but these female drivers seem to disappear and it all became men again goody anyway so we've st started the dare to be different non-profit organization with the aim of getting more women involved into motorsports this has now united with the Girls on Track in, um, initiative, which is run by the motorsports governing body, the FIA. And if anybody is aware of who the FIA is, they're basically the ones that make up all the rules for all the um, different levels of formula, you know, like E, 3, 2 and 1. They're, they're the ones that they, they make the rules and the decisions. So, because Susie was part of the CEO, she was quite high up in this team, it meant that this one particular team was the most gender diverse team in Formula E, with one third of their key roles held by women. Which is great, it, it's a success, it, you know, it steps in sort of the right direction, if you will. Could it be better? Of course it could be better. Every, there's always room for improvement in these things, but the things that we need to focus on here is the fact that for the first time, a third of the roles, uh, these very key, very important roles in this team are being held by women. But once upon a time ago, they were all held by men. So it's a great achievement to be celebrating um, as, as a woman. So on the track, there hasn't been a female on the starting grid of a Formula One Grand Prix since 1992. And a woman hasn't competed in a Formula E since 2016, which is a little bit shocking, don't you think? There's a big concern in that that happened. Um, why that happened, I don't. I really don't know. But it did. So I found an article um, with Susie talking to CNN, which is a news uh, channel in America, um, and what she said. Uh, and I quote was, what I believe needs to change is the fact that we need to get more women in at a grassroot level. We need to get more little girls karting. We need to get more little girls interested in motorsports. 
for the best to then rise to the top it's simply a numbers game which i completely and utterly agree with um for somebody who is a girl and was a tomboy and still kind of is a tomboy i don't, I don't really wear skirts and dresses all that very often um you know i probably would have joy enjoyed pe more i mean i hated pe but i think if i had um, an idea that maybe that I could have gone into motorsports that might have appealed to me and I might have been much more interested in PE which obviously as much as I hate it it is one of those lessons that you had to do and it's very beneficial for your health because you need um, to do lots of exercise to obviously become fit and healthy uh, mentally and physically and where I grew up so I grew up in like West Cumbria so it's quite a poor part of the UK okay um, it's quite isolated um, people don't really like everybody seems to know people's business um and everybody else in the country have never heard of west coming before in their whole entire lives um that's how isolated it is and so we do have a um karting place like a center um and that's in many pop but not a lot of people go to it i don't think a lot of people even know that it exists it's been there for years and i've only recently found out that it existed um i don't believe it's of the best quality i don't know because like i've never been um but i think if we had the facilities um, especially places like in the countryside it's not more like not really cities because cities always seem to have um quite a variety of different facilities but if you could get um these like carton facilities into like the countryside and you, you encouraged more females then you know you'd get a much more diverse or um not you know or females in the sport because you or, well in any motorsports because then you've got females that come from all sorts of um of backgrounds especially when like west companies it's a farming industry um primarily and so you know a lot of people do care about animals around home they do care a bit about the environment so you'd be able to gain those experiences from these women and you'd be able to make the sport much more um, friendly for the environment which I know is something that they are um, trying to do anyway. So, in case you don't know this but it's painfully obvious, um, Formula 1 is it's a man's world uh, and if you want to be even more um, pedantic about it it's actually a rich man's world um, which we've discovered um, when we've looked at the drive to survive there's a lot of money that goes into it um, and in the 62 years the world championship has existed so it's only existed for 62 years five women have entered a grand prix and they compared to 822 men in the same period and for some reason these women so we've only had five but these women aren't really even successful and they don't even seem to be even um get to even compete in the world championship why i, I don't know it, it baffles me it's it's just horrendous you know but anyway so in 1969 when susie was only 13 years old did i say 1969 oh my god in 1996 this is because it, i am sat in this shed it is like 30 degrees or more outside and it's like a sauna and the heat is literally just getting to me now um anyway so in 1996 when susie was only 13 she was named british woman cat racing driver of the year which must have been a huge achievement for her with an impressive title under her belt and a clear taste of success susie then obviously she went on to win her first 24 hour uh, middle east cat championship and she also won the Scottish Junior Intercontinental a title in 1997. So she achieved all this before I was even born, by the way. Um, and she, Susie also held the British Women Car in Race and Driver title for four consecutive years. And in 2000, so well, I was born in, in, by 2000. Uh, she was awarded the title of top female cat driver in the world. So, in October 2013, Susie was awarded an honorary fellowship at the University of Edinburgh in recognition of her role as an ambassador for women in sport. Which again is huge, isn't it? It's a huge achievement. Like I said, she's a really inspiring woman. 
So in 2016, Susie became an ambassador for She's Mercedes, inspired by the German um, Marquis is like best or nothing mantra. She Mercedes is a, a networking platform dedicated to inspiring, connecting, and empowering women to be their best. Um, which you know, something I have noticed through this like Formula One is that um, Mercedes are like seem to be the only team that are pushing for this sort of like diversity. So they like they they help obviously they try to help um, more females get into the sport, not necessarily like um, through racing, but through like engineering uh, and all those different types of jobs as well. Because there's loads, um, and they're also you know they're trying to help fight against racism as well and they're a very inspiring team because like i said they, they seem to be the only team that um to me anyway that are doing these general uh, these types of things um which you know more teams sort of need to get involved and take a leaf out of their book and and help as well so, so whilst we're speaking about mercedes um susie has actually known lewis since they were quite young um because they actually carted um, against each other so there you go so she she claims that she has, she went on to say that they've known each other from around about the age of eight because Susie it, I think is actually slightly older than um, Liz but it's not by much um, yeah it goes on so she also said um, this is quotation marks by the way we competed against each other in a go-karting then in Formula Reynolds there was a race where we both finished on the podium. So that's a huge achievement. That shows you how much talent she's got right there. He was first and I was third. He was about 19, I was 21. I couldn't open my champagne bottle and he came over and he did it for me. He had a lot more practice than I had. So that, that again, that kind of shows you how um, sweet and nice Lewis is but it also kind of shows you that kind of great relationship that those two have had um, and like I said for the fact that they both ended up on a podium because we know Lewis is like now seven world champion and he's this fantastic driver he's like one of the best in the world uh, and for her to be third and up on that podium as a woman with him even though he like obviously this, this all was still to come for him is looking back at that now that that's got to be a huge achievement and just shows you how much um talent that a, a woman can have she you know um in motorsports especially if she like puts her mind to it and she's dedicated to it as well so she also went on to say because again this is in quotation marks because i i've grabbed things from um articles uh, she says as an eight year old in cast you're not conscious of gender she says in the, like the latest episode of um of this sport in life so she says she finished 15th overall and she was a pretty solid result but i got called up onto the podium ceremony and was awarded a trophy for top female in the world i remember being accurately embarrassed because i thought i'm not here to be top female i'm here to be the best driver then i thought how many females were in the race anyway I could only count out of the 115 competitors. She could only count four out of 150. Uh, that was no achievement. That was the first time it hit me that people were picking her out because of her gender. Which, in stuff like that, it, it, it's not very really nice because, um, like I said, we all want to be equal. We don't want to be um, picked out um, of a crowd because of our gender or because of the colour of our skin or because of our sexuality or things like that. Things that make us who we are, you know. We want to be picked out and recognised for our, in her case, for her talent and for, in other cases, the success that people are able to do. So there was a vibe around the sports um, old guard and it wasn't just um, that, you know, Susie would fail. But a lot of people, um, but they kind of wanted her to fail because she's a woman. Which... It's horrendous, it is horrible, especially when you come to that realisation. Um, but at the same time, that must make you... Um, you want to get out there and you want to be successful. You want to not fail because you kind of want to stick one finger up in the air at all those that thought that you wanted you to fail and thought that you would because of your gender to prove that you, know, you are just as good and as capable in this sport than any man. However, Williams never had this um, sort of either about them at all 
So she she said about the big question was could a woman handle the speed of the cars and the big development in the technology that made them much faster than they were previously and much more physical in terms of g-force than they were previously and i could sense those who felt she never she's never going to make it i was very focused and i could cut out all the noise around it but i certainly felt a huge amount of pressure so that's things of what um susie herself said yeah so i think the answer to that is if you do the right training and everything that a woman can do it i don't see what there's there's nothing really stopping them i know that obviously men have much more muscle um than what women do generally speaking but um i think it's just all down to training and and dedication so at the time the legend of sterling moss who we're going to talk about a little bit um in another video because it's something might um shock you about him so he made a few comments that hit the headlines and amongst the other things he said that women don't have the mental um, amplitude to compete at the top end of motorsports. But then he decided he would little phone Susie to say that he meant what he said but he didn't mean to include her in his assessment. And the interesting thing is that um, Sterling Moss hired his sister who was going to do a bigger one. Um, called Pat Moss okay she was a rally driver and she was doing she was a rally driver at the same time that he was a Formula One driver um, and she certainly would um, have not agreed with her brother on that on this particular topic at all because it doesn't make sense that he's um, excluding just this one woman he doesn't you know backtracking a little bit I think he was there, but anyway. So one of the big questions that was asked to Susie was, is is F1 any closer now to having a female driver than it was when she retired? Um, which is now six years ago, it says five years ago here, but just, and unfortunately Susie turned around and she's quite correct, said no, it's not, sadly which I think really needs to change. It comes down to the number game. The talent pool of women competing in the sports is too low. There are 10,000 boys globally racing cars and if you're lucky there are 100 girls, 200 max. So when you look at that, that, that you know, 100 or 200 to 10,000, it's not enough. It's absolutely shocking and it's because it's society portrays this as a um as most sports as a male sport and not a woman's sport um and this is they claim that women have no right to be there which i call bull crap because i think every woman has any right to do what she wants to do she can put a mind to it you know so susie also says so this is quotations was still perceived as being we're still perceived as being a male dominant and it has to change. It comes down to the action. It's very easy to say you want to see more diversity. It's very easy to put a hashtag on social media post, but it's action that creates change. In Toto's Mercedes team, they have 12% females. Globally, with people competing in the sport, we are looking at under 2%, which is shocking. So in her particular um, from the E team, they have 33%. So she's putting her money where her mouth is. And she's absolutely right. At the end of the day, actions speak louder than words. Um, so at the moment, the reason we're doing these videos um, is because I have huge plans for the unity of life. Um, I'm going to try and get into business, try and create an organisation because like she, like everybody keeps saying, like I would just say actions do speak louder than words. Um, but we are, I am at the very early days um, of doing that. Um, I have, like I said, I've got ideas. I don't want to go into them at the moment um, because they don't come off, but I'm hoping they do. Um, but yeah, well, very early days, and I'll keep you up, updated um, near the time when the time seems right. So she, Susie, continued to say that she was a critic, 
um, electric racing cars, she didn't think so. so again, these quotations, this is what she's quoted on saying. When I went to New York and saw what was going on, I had to eat my words. These races happened in city centres, so we so we bring it to the public. Strig circuits in some of the best cities in the world. It's really exciting. The technology is incredible. It's cut an edge and it's the stuff we'll be seeing on the roads in three to five years. It's a new way of racing. Being part of the electrical revolution as a team principal is a great space to be in. Because obviously, we're, like I said, we're trying to get, make cars much more um, eco-friendly. And electric seems to be the way to go um so it is um being perceived that one day that we all cars are going to be electric and you're not going to have um diesel and petrol cars but we'll have to see on that one so that's all i have for today so if you found this very interesting and you learned something about Susie wolf um, and maybe you've been inspired by her which i really hope that you have i know i certainly have been um i know because i i was a little girl just, just to give you this little bit of perspective, I was like a, I was a little girl, um, and my biological father, who I have absolutely nothing to do with now because he's a mentally abusive douchebag. Um, I'm, I'm trying, uh, trying to use polite words here. Um, he he was very old fashioned it's like so women have a certain role men have a certain role women must be in the kitchen and you must be somebody's wife and you must be somebody's mother and you can't wear pants you must wear skirts and you must have child's uh, dresses and makeup and being and like dolls and i hate dolls i'm i'm petrified of them uh, and before anybody laughs okay i have uh, two words for you chucky annabelle if you are not scared of dolls after those films, then there is something psychologically wrong with you, okay? It's not just me. Um, you know, I, I like I just wasn't into dolls. I wanted robotic cars. I mean, the best toy that I had growing up in, like, the uh, very early noughties and the late 80s, the late 90s, sorry, because, like, I was born right at the very back end of the 90s, so I don't really remember the 90s much, but the best toy that I had was a robotic dog, and this dog literally could walk and sit, that was all the dog could do, he couldn't even bark, and that was like the, one of the most exciting things that I ever had, um, and I liked things like that, I liked, um, I wanted Hot Wheels, you know, I wanted um, scale electrics for my so-called biological father, he had one in the attic, but I was never allowed to touch it because I'm a girl, right? Um, and I remember, like, in 2007, when the car's Pixar film came out. He didn't want to take me to watch it, right? I uh, took a lot of begging and pleading, and, and eventually he took me to watch it. Because he perceived it as a boy's film, right? Because it was all about cars. And he certainly did not like the fact that my uh, favourite character was not Sally Karen, who is the love interest of Lightning McQueen, but my favourite character was actually Lightning McQueen. Because, how dare you like him? He's a male. Um, I was somebody who never really liked the princesses growing up, you know? Um, I'd always liked the animal sidekicks more um, because the princes to me were just as wussy and weak as the um, princesses were and, the, you know, they were no better. They were promoting this um, damsel in distress facade and it wasn't until, like... I mean, yeah, Mulan, you know, I, I, I liked that film growing up because obviously you have a... the female is actually the hero in it. Um, and then obviously I liked I liked Frozen because of the way like Elsa obviously she doesn't have a love interest and like Moana and the more modern sort of Disney, especially Tangled. I mean I absolutely loved Eugene, um, like because he kind of reminded me a little bit of Aladdin. I, I did like Aladdin growing up, but my favorite character was um, definitely um, the genie and the boom. I mean, like Jasmine for her tiger. That was it, um, <laughs> and. Um, you know, I do like Rapunzel as well because I mean she got flung out, didn't she? I mean she was she was very um, she was a kick-ass woman. <laughs> you know, she didn't need a man to save herself uh, to to save her. They kind of saved each other in the end, which is very nice. Um, and it's kind of more what reality needs, especially in Disney because Disney is such um, a huge influence on many children. You know. Um, but yeah, like I said, I've I've always liked things like cars and stuff and. Um, I was a bit of a tomboy and stuff, but because of the way that I was brought up and 
the lack of facilities that we have here motorsports was just something that i never thought i would be able to do um uh, i was gonna say it's probably a bit late for me but there is um, a thing called formula women and um like they're allowing women of any age and of any background as long as they've got a driving license and they're like 18 uh plus then they can um become an age, age female driver which is great um but we'll talk about that in the next video so again like i said if you've learned anything from this and you feel inspired from Susie like i have and you feel like maybe other women need to be just as inspired as you um then share this video uh, if you haven't already and you would like to because you've really enjoyed this video maybe you've seen a few videos and you you really like my content then click on my face and subscribe that'd be great and when you subscribe if you click on that notification bell you're going to be notified every wednesday and saturday when i upload so you'll never miss a video and if you want to see any of the other Formula 1 content that I have been covering, then there's a playlist down here. I wish you can click on that and you can watch all the other Formula 1 videos. And that is all from me. Bye.